once the gun goes off, you just, it kind of takes care of itself. But my first 100K, I was forced to walk during that race because I was so exhausted. Hiking or walking is a skill set you have to develop in ultra. I hiked my way into a second place finish on the podium. I mean, I, I wanted to ink some history and this is my slowest run ever. Yeah, that's a good, good mark. Not a lot of top elite that does it and finishes this slow though. Are you gonna finish? For any long endeavor, especially something like UTMB, I think it's important to chunk it down into manageable pieces. It's 107 miles total with 33,000 feet of climbing, 33,000 feet of descent, but I focus on every crew station and that's basically five points that I'm gonna see my, my team, my people, and I just focus on getting there. The second section is where really the bigger climbs start. It's just a gut punch. It's really tough. From Cormier to Champelac, you cross over from Italy to Switzerland. You know, you gotta just settle into a rhythm, uh, knowing that the hardest part is to come. So you don't wanna burn too many candles in that section. I really try to focus on getting through that moment, knowing that something else will change. Um, so that's, that's one of the big struggles. but I'm not good at admitting that I need help. I feel like too much rides on it. I train through injuries or I keep it quiet. That's what my job is dependent on. I feel like I won't be loved if I can't run. Yeah. I can get you like, yeah, cheese and crackers, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, Kids these days, they, they go couch to ultra marathon, but I think there's joy in taking the steps, learning through the process. Call me old fashioned, but I think a couple of years, slow, continuous and consistent training is really the, the key, like a little bit every single day. And if you have a really good support crew, they're gonna support you through injury, illness, failure, but I haven't had the confidence to like open up and talk to people about those things. So I just internalize it. Like I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna stay injured and I'm gonna just struggle in solitude versus letting people in. You're welcome. It's um, okay. It's a little bit hot, so I think just like dip it in. Okay. Thank you. Evaluating where I'm at in the race and if it's going well, this is something where I've kind of lost it in the past because I fall back into that comparison trap. I'm gonna be out there in best case like 20 hours. You know, that's a long time that I just need to get comfortable with being in a place and not worried about what's ahead of me or what's behind me. I can't believe my headlamp died. Dude, water on It was embarrassing. Water on it was like, oh man, what on earth? What a rookie mistake. It was super cold, the battery was yeah. cold. And I think the fog like did something to it. We were running in fog for a long time. I may try to get one of these one down though. Okay. I can't believe you're still out of here. You're a fucking it's, uh, <laughs> I feel for your for your knacker. Yeah. This next climb is brutal. Uh, yeah. It's an ash kipper. Yeah, you gotta make it though, mate. I didn't give up. I know. I know you're fine. I mean you're not fine. No, he's fine. Look at she ran the last like No, he looks like Okay, you are fine. You're Actually, fine. I did run the last part. Are um you just like uh, I was stumbling, I fell like into the dirt and just like passed out. Like I think I was hypoglycemic and dizzy and Oh man. Yeah. So do you think I should continue? I don't know. I don't know. Closing the loop would be nice. Okay, then go. And, you know, I met Lindsay through running. When you let them in, you realize that they care about you more than just what your biggest fear was. Then it makes you like appreciate, okay, like that's what relationships are for. Oh, that was gonna pack. 
Thank you, thank you. Keep it up, buddy. We're going around the mountain. The final one is probably the hardest 50K of your life, and it's from Champagne Lock to the finish. And if you look at it on paper, it's three consecutive climbs straight up, straight down. And they're basically like 10 kilometer climb with 3,000 feet, and then the reverse downhill. And you do that three times before you come back into Chamonix. And so in training, I really think it's important to harden your legs for that section by getting a specific long run when you just like choose a big hill if you're if you have anything near your house the biggest hill you can and do repeats up and down it um, not only does physically it prepare you mentally it's really a grind to have to immediately once you hit the bottom of the hill turn around and head right back up i do not smell very good really <laughs> it's all right tim no you know honestly like it's just the way it is sometimes I'm, with some people yeah, yeah. i'm not I, champions <sighs> We're not champions. <laughs> We're just everyday heroes. Jesus. <laughs> not, we're not even everyday heroes, man. Bravo, bravo. Bravo. I sat for too long, got really cold. And then on the, the big climb. I think you have too much energy. If you're talking, you need to stop. You need to stop. We're human. I'm not. I'm robot. You are not human. I'm... You're angel. Hey, I'm gonna catch these guys. <laughs> yeah. I got it. <laughs> they looked really good. <laughs> like, of all the slow people, they look the best slowest. What are you saying? I don't look good? You are a supermodel. I just look terrible. In Messy! Messy. <laughs> There's a hill. That's okay, this one's gentle. Yeah. This next climb is the hardest one, of course. Really? Yep. You gonna go with you? It's where I got the helicopter Uber. <gasps> Do it again, I'll go with you. Oops. Oh, okay. How far out are you going? <sighs> Until you told me to turn around. <sighs> this is the hardest hill? <laughs> this is nice. This is the hardest hill on the whole course. Right here. Do you want your poles? I do, but I have too many snacks. I haven't felt comfortable on these trails in quite a few years. I was forcing things. I wanted this so bad, but I wasn't in a place to accept it. And when, that, when there's that disconnect, things aren't gonna flow. For a long time, I kind of forgot what it meant to actually be happy. You ready to full send? I hope so, but I don't know how fast you will be. We will see. I made a mistake and had four bears, but no excuses, right? No, no. I'm going to tear you up. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I've been resting for the last 20 hours. That's great. That's great. The strange thing about body dysmorphic disorders or illnesses is that like you're so self-obsessed but not in like a vanity way you're obsessed with how horrible you think you are and it's tiring and it's like you don't even get that benefit of like thinking you're you're something special like you just think you're worthless one more downhill Oh, we are yeah. um, 7.52. Okay. So you have one hour, eight minutes. What are you trying to beat? Before 9 p.m. at the Chamonix uh, finish line. Okay. So he, cause we're at 25 hours and 52 minutes. Oh, Ida! <laughs> Hello! How are you? Oh, you know, best day of my life. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, this, this is Ida, one of my teammates. Hey. Good to meet you. Good yeah, to meet I, you. I think, I think I've, see, I've seen you on the trail. Yeah. Today. Augustine. Are, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. I'm bad. Uh, I'm just right? kidding, trying to get this guy down. <laughs> I was like so worried today when he never came down from Jean Paul Prater. I was like, oh, his knee. Fuck. And then it's like, 
Oh no, he's just taking a nap. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I, Ida, you'll, you'll have to look at my Strava. I swear it. <laughs> like the first one mile took me an hour. Yeah. No, but that's what they saw. So I was like, oh no, something happened with his knee. And, he was like, and then you were like climbing well all the time. Yeah, it was more. I was I was just stumbling, and like then I fell over at one point and just like fell asleep. And then when I got to the the, the medical station, he he just said, hey, here's a cot. Lay down. And I was like, okay. And then I woke up, I, he woke me up like 10 or 15 minutes later. <laughs> but yeah, I was on the struggle bus. We want to have like those high highs. Even sometimes low lows are great because it makes you feel something. But it's like that middle space is where majority of life is spent. And it's like the mundane, the normal, the kind of like but in a I race, that's, what I that's some of it. Like here, I'm going to be out there in best case, like 20 hours. Success out there is really going to come from evaluating am I giving it what I have at that moment and letting everything else just disappear. Focus on the things that you should be when, and that would be, you know, healthy, sustainable training, proper nutrition, not taking shortcuts, because over time, time your body's going to adapt to the demands of whatever sport you're doing. You don't need to manipulate. But you know, at first I was like, ah, oh, I get upset because I was like, I hate to be that bad. But then on the other hand, it was kind of greedy to expect not to go well. So, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sad. I'm like. I'm good. You're a dreamer. <laughs> that dream day we all train for is when the body and the mind actually align finally. And I don't know if mine will. I feel like I'm getting closer and because it's something I am seeking, if it doesn't happen this year, I'm gonna show up next year and do it again. Like, or the next year. <laughs> We have a four-year plan. Like we want to get an athlete on the top of the UTMP podium. I would love to be that athlete, but if I'm not, and I can assist one of our younger gals or guys on the team, like I'm going to take as much pride out of that as if it was me up there. And so I feel like this season we're really just kind of building towards this next phase in our our team, and I'm excited to kind of be a part of that. Thank you for everything.